great thing about working with Ang Lee is it's not difficult to get great actors' attention. And then when you say Ang Lee plus the Hulk, of course everybody thought, well that's bizarre, I better find out more about it. It's so remarkable, I think, the way he looks at the world, you know, um, his really lyrical sensibility. He's very special, you know, there's no other word for it, and that's why so many people are interested in this film, and it's why so many people will go and see the film. Ang brought in an entire sensibility and a focus on what is it that drives Bruce Banner? What is it that brings the Hulk to life? He's incredibly brilliant and at the same time he's also very humble and I think people see that in him and so just want to do things for him. Everyone wants to go the extra mile for him. The whole combination of doing a superhero summer film but from Ang Lee's perspective is uh, it's pretty exciting. He was challenging me often to uh, you know, go move outside of my own perspectives, and I always uh, welcome that. Action. Three, two, one, go! Oh! This is my first Hollywood experience, so to speak, and is like the biggest movie Universal ever made. It's the first Marvel superhero who is a monster. Uh, it's tragic and it has a lot of complexity, uh, psychodrama, so that's all good stuff for me. I call it my uh, new green destiny. It's the enigmatic effort to put pulp culture, God. pulp art, uh, with serious drama and try to make it work. Action. Okay, 13 seconds. We are set for double exposure. Just be a sec. Because I knew Ang was going to direct, I almost didn't dare come up with my own vision of what it, what it may be. I just went in with my eyes wide open. It was interesting, I know Ang was at pains to really try and come up with some kind of tangible link with, with reality, even though we're in this kind of surreal comic book world. And I, I knew that Ang was visually doing that in so many different ways during the film. At, at times I wouldn't, I wouldn't press him. I just wouldn't always want to know everything and just try and work on my own little world, knowing that you're in the hands of a master and someone who, everything is where it is for, for a very good reason. Action. I must have seen you, or known you. I've seen a l comic book movies that sort of really play into, oh, this is a comic book, so we're gonna make it kind of campy. And I think what I liked about Aang's approach is that he really he didn't want his central characters to feel that way. He really wanted them to be invested in what they were doing. And so my character, she she looks like a girl that you would really see in a lab. You know, she's not like lab coat, hair up, glasses. You know, that that version of it. It's really a ver you know a more honest version of what a woman who worked in a lab in Berkeley would be. You know, he really played it as if this were a very serious drama. Well, I got news for you. I didn't come here to see you. I came here to see my son. When Ann came out to the house and we sat down and talked, he said we could explore this, the darkness of relationship father-son. We were on sync, I think probably the moment we looked at each other. I think bringing some realism is important to bring the audience into the world and believing it. it it's just a path, it's not the end goal. Uh, somehow you, you have to make it real to bring them in the first place. Lean it back a little farther. Lean it back a little going. farther. You had your chest a little back. I think Ang is an incredibly ethereal human being. Ethereal in the sense of that his ideas are floating in an ether above him and around him. That he's picking at them and expressing them and showing to you in a way that it's not quite definable. It's not like certain directors where you're able to say, oh, there's the idea and I'm being given this, this take on this character or this take on the way to play a scene. Action. I'm not sure you've got much of a choice. Come on. 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 Come on.
Come on, Bruce, aren't you feeling a little angry? This role was um, unbelievable and also serving a master such as Aang is, is a huge uh, responsibility and it's the fact that uh, he chose me to, to help him with, with, that, with that vision. It's been a, uh, you know, almost life-changing experience. It's certainly something I'll never forget. I like it. Aang had to become the Hulk for all of us. And he did. And on the set, he was able to communicate to the actors who the Hulk was and what he was doing and the emotion and the, and the drama and the power in every scene in which there was interaction with the cast and, and a digital creation. Because we have to create a character from nothing and I want to treat him like an actor, not a cartoon character. Uh, I want him to act as much as the rest of the cast act who are good actors. I want to bring the realism and the movie is very much rest on his shoulder. So it's very important for us. Uh, a beat before it looks like when he threw it out, he was like, yeah. I've loved Aang's films um, ever since Sense and Sensibility. And so I've really respected the fact that he can direct actors so subtly. And up to now, almost every computer animated character out there has been way too broad. So finally we're going to see an animated character really act like a real person. And that goes back to real life. All our animators are required to look at real life reference. Sometimes it would be simply going from workstation to workstation. Hundreds of animators at work on these computers at ILM and, and going from shot to shot directing everything from the flicker of an eyebrow to the movement of an earlobe to Aang or uh, stunt guys or whoever putting on the motion capture suit. And uh, most of the time we actually would get Aang. We'd stop him in the hallway, we'd bring him into one of our offices, we'd have Aang do the performance. When he has something in his mind and no actor in the world can get exactly what he's looking for, we just say, well, you know, show us what you want and we'll get exactly that. You seem to do a bit of a, a pause before you then look at the father. I thought that was too obvious. Okay, okay. I mean, you can change it up at yeah. this point anytime you want. It's very hard, for some reason, to bring the realism of how he moves, the physics. So we need some kind of blueprint. I don't think we have that much time, so the quickest way to do it is me putting on a suit instead of directing someone. Look out, he's Good therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and action! The purpose of motion capture is to get realistic animation data to drive computer-generated characters. You know, when he's out there, it's a, it's a big deal. Um, he's very serious about, about getting the performances. He uh, apparently has a lot of acting experience, and he gets completely into character. That moment was good. Okay, okay. He does know what he likes. He knows what doesn't work. Um, he's very meticulous, but uh, we have a whole team here very willing to make his vision come to life. Hang in there. Uh, Hang's working for his money today. <laughs> Normally, the director is busy getting his next film going or working on the sound or the editing of the film that we're working on. But to have a director here is really great. And it's very important on this film because he's essentially directing the star of the movie, you know, one of the one of the principles of the film, the Hulk, needs to be directed by the director, not by anybody else. You know, you ask for a performance, and you re, you know refine it and refine it, and you react to it and change it, and you get the scene you want, whether it's Eric or Jennifer or Nick or whatever, and he's doing it in this case with us. And action, and one, and two. With Aang, it's, it's, he has such a special vision for this picture. It's, uh, it's just amazing to watch the way he can pull performances out of not only the human characters, but working with ILM and saying, well, here's what I want to do for Hulk when he's in this. You know, he may have him just cringe up and do something really you know, small and intricate or something just you know, really grand and large. And action. Thank <laughs> you.
And we cut. To be working with a guy like Ang Lee and to see the way he can bring a just totally different spin to a comic book uh, movie. Okay. When I first talked to, uh, to Ang, one of the things he said, which I don't know if he meant as a joke or not, but he said he was looking for the sound of green. And uh, so we've been thinking about that. Right off the bat, he asked for signature sounds that would feel like the Hulk is deep inside Bruce Banner, but even before we see the Hulk. So I like that kind of approach. Gary and I are both hoping to have this big sounding movie, but uh, also have some interesting detail to it and some subtleties that you wouldn't really expect from a big object. In fact, the most interesting scenes, sounding wise, in my opinion, are the subtle scenes when he's he's inquisitive with his eyes and breathing, and all that you know comes down to a very quiet moment. Hang and I and Gary discussed this to determine whether we should be giving Danny Elfman um, some cues on where he might want to uh, hold back uh, scoring the film to allow for those more subtler things. I gotta talk to you, Andy. Mm -hmm. As we worked together, his direction it was much different than most directors I've worked with because it was more psychological, internal, about uh, the process and the characters. and. Um, he challenged me often to not sound like myself. So I'd be playing music and he'd go, no, that's too Danny Elfman, too Danny Elfman. And I really like that. Okay, oh, you Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of the reasons that Aang is perfect for the Hulk is that on the one hand, he's the nicest guy in show business. And on the other hand, he's probably the most ambitious. And this will fall off, and I will kill the second beat, which is the top. That's you, you can spend stuff. time on, in preparation with Aang so and think, this is going to be a breeze, and then turn around and realize that you've just been talked into doing about 100 times more work than you ever thought you could produce in your life. Well, that's involving everything, be personal, Attending every aspect of it down to the very last detail is the only way I know how to make movie. It's just I don't know any other way to make movie. From the first small movie I did in New York, being the independent filmmaker, to Chinese film, that's the only way I don't know it. If I cannot personally attend them, I shouldn't do the movie. So the size of the movie ends on how much I decide I can be personal to put my hands on. Uh, I think that's important in filmmaking. Not, a, not that I'm a control freak, but I think all the elements have to be in one movie, one vision. 